Christopher, what about making the documentary Tiny uh, helped you become a better filmmaker? What did you learn from that experience? Wow, so much. Uh, Tiny was definitely, for me, a boot camp and really in filmmaking, but also particularly making documentaries. Uh, from everything from the actual process of you know, shooting and editing and you know, doing sound and those things, but also from the business uh, side of things in terms of raising money and distribution and the film festival circuit and, and learning about festival strategy all the way through um, running your own business. So, I mean, I learned so many things. It's, uh, you know, I can't even, <laughs> we don't have enough time to go over it really. Well, you had said earlier off camera that the design community is, is a very enthusiastic Mm -hmm. community and then it's a large group I think um, did you think that they would take to the film as they did I mean it's one of our most watched videos from when we interviewed you so did you think that they would just be so taken by it when we first you know set out to do tiny Marette and I you know we, we didn't really know what to expect and it certainly exceeded any sort of expectation that we had for the project initially um, but we along the way saw how people were reacting to it you know, so when we, f the first time it kind of went public as a project was when we did Kickstarter and seeing how that took off um, and, you know, how before we even finished the movie, we had something like 700, 800 Facebook followers for it. And, um, you know, we, we could tell that there was something there and the interest in the media all along and just the way that things would get, you know, would be shared or go viral or things like that. And, you know, it, it got to the point where uh, we would talk to a new reporter or whoever and we'd say, you know, just so you know, you're a lot of people are, are going to read your article or whatever. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, cool. of course, everybody always says that. <laughs> sure. And then we get an email like a week to the day later. And like, this was like the most read article that we'd ever had. And I'm like, <laughs> I told you, you know, um, I'd like to pretend that that was because Marit and I were very uh, charming and they really cared about our story. But in reality, I think that we just really timed it well. And that uh, the tiny house phenomenon, it was... Um, Basically, as if, you know, there's just a whole bunch of dried hay and somebody lit a match and, and uh, we just happened to really time it perfectly. And uh, that and the interest in that kind of design in particular and simple living was at just at the right place. Um, but I, I, I have since learned, you know, through that process that, you know, having communities that are interested in the topic of your film as a documentary filmmaker um, is really helpful, you know, and, and particularly because communities are, uh, you know, it's, it's basically, um, what do they call it? like a lateral community where it's, it's a bunch of people who choose to like, you know, associate because of something that they share, like a, like an interest rather than like a geographic location. And those communities can really like propel, propel your projects forward. Right, and I know Jay Schaefer had been around for a long time with Tumbleweed. Mm -hmm. I think that's his yeah, name. Yeah, although he, he now has his own company called Four Lights Tiny House Company. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, so then from what you learned in terms of looking back, what would you not repeat in terms of maybe of a planning perspective, um, technical, um, even getting it into film festivals? What were some things that you planned to do differently with? I know you have many projects you want to be involved in, so what did it teach you in that sense? I, I think... You know, honestly, uh, this not to sound, you know, I guess slightly arrogant or whatever, but but we actually didn't really make that many mistakes, which we very easily could have. But we were very, um, we had a lot of good mentors who kind of steered us in the right direction. Um, I, I would say that if, if there, I think some of the bigger mistakes though were were. And I wouldn't know, I don't know if this is necessarily a mistake, but we set out to make a short film. And so when we decided to make a longer film, there were some things that we didn't film in the beginning that I would have with going into it with that knowledge. And uh, so when we tried to make a feature, like a, like a longer feature, you know, 80 minutes long or whatever, we realized that the material we had couldn't really make a compelling narrative of that length. And so we ended up scaling it back to 62 minutes, which ended up being the right, the right fit for the movie and it worked great. However, uh, in terms of distribution, no one uh, is gonna distribute a film less than 74-ish minutes. So it really automatically ruled out any sort of all rights deals that we might've had with um, some of the you know, bigger doc distributors who initially were interested, but ultimately didn't do it because they couldn't do a theatrical release. 
Well, that leads me to my next and also last question about Tiny, and just that is that um, did you receive millions of views on like Netflix and Hulu and iTunes, and how were you able to verify that? Right. So uh, you can't. They won't tell you. In, in terms of uh, SVOD subscription video on demand, they won't tell you how many views you have. But we, I can say that I've sort of pieced together that it, there. Are, I would guess uh, if I were estimating anywhere from five to maybe as much as 30 million views on Netflix alone. And the way that I came to that assessment, and that's, a, I mean, it's still a wide range, so obviously I don't know that much, but uh, back before Netflix changed their layout, they used to have the star ratings and underneath the star ratings, it would tell you how many people gave it a star rating. And uh, I think when ours went before they, right when they remodeled the last time I had looked, it was like 500 and, 60,000 star ratings, which, you know, is uh, for documentaries actually is like really high. Um, most ho were having around 50,000. And if you can assume, and I mean, I don't really know what the real number is, but I, I imagine only maybe one out of 10 people actually take the trouble to like right. rate a movie. I mean, so 10 times that would be 5 million, but it could be as high as 20. You know, you, we, we don't really know. Um, since then, I had a meeting at Netflix and I, I tried to ask him, I was like, do you know how many uh, views we, and of course, you know, the person I was talking with was like, was like, yeah, I can't tell you that, but I can tell you that uh, it had a lot more than my friend's movie and hers and she had a lot or something. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so that's as close as I'm going to get to an answer. But it, it, it was a lot. And um, I mean, even like one time we actually found a pirated copy of Tiny on, on YouTube and it had something like 70,000 views. And oh, wow. I was like, well, if the pirated YouTube version has 70,000, then, uh, we can assume <laughs> that the non-pirated version, you know, had more. So uh, I think it's still on Hulu. And um, I, I had a friend who worked at Hulu who also said that it was doing pretty well, but I don't know. And it didn't come out on Hulu until like two years or maybe like a year and a half after it was on Netflix. So I don't really know what the numbers are, but I assume that all, if you included all of the views everywhere, it would probably be in the tens of millions. 